so I have a stupid amount of books. Unabashed chiller. It's happening. Fine tingling fiction at its best. My nemesis has struck again. So as you may or may not know, October's are a time for much reading for me because I save all my October spooky reads for October. So I have a stupid amount of books. The books I have in front of me here are not even all the books that are on my TBR because I have a couple that I don't have yet. Either because they're on their way or because they're about to be published and aren't quite yet. So um, yeah. I don't think it's the amount, I think last year I had like 30 books on my TBR. <laughs> I think this year it's like, I don't know how many it is. 24? <laughs> That's doable, right? Totally. Oh okay, so before I forget them, we're gonna do the ones that I don't have yet. So the ones I don't have yet, um, the first one is uh, not published yet, it's like a right about to be, and that is Dowry of Blood. I mean, technically it was published, self-published, but the like traditional publishing of it, which is what I've pre-ordered, comes out like next Tuesday, I wanna say, like the first Tuesday of October. So that, and then I ordered from Europe, Vita Nostra, because everyone, not everyone obviously, but I had a bunch of people comment on my Dark Academia video saying, Sounds like you should read Vita Nostra. And I was like, all right, if all y'all think this, I mean, how bad could it be? And then kind of also related to the Dark Academia video, I really loved Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. So her, uh, one of her other books, Night Film, um, I've decided now I want to read and this is the perfect time to do it. So Night Film is en route to me. Okay, but the rest of the books I have in physical form, oh, also very quickly, you will expect to see the wolf on this TBR, but it will not be here because my nemesis has struck again. That's right, Alan from the Library of Alexandria has decided to sabotage this read-along by joining it. And for his sake, we have changed the schedule to be November, December, January because we are accommodating. It's okay. Alex and I are still reading a book together this month. <laughs> Never fear. So uh, without further ado, here are the rest of the books that I'm gonna attempt to get through in October. First up, uh, this was on my TBR last year. Didn't get around to it. This year, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And that's Carrie by Stephen King. It's super short. Um, I also put this on my TBR before I knew that I would have another Stephen King book on my TBR. That wasn't up to me. But it is, it's super short. It's such a classic. I just, you know, this one is, it, it should be doable, right? It's, super, it's so short. It's so short. Uh, next up, Mara and I are continuing. We've decided to just get through the rest of the Rainwild Chronicles through the, the end of the year. So last month we read the first Rainwild Chronicles book. We have three more. There's three more months left in the year. So we're just doing it. So next up is Dragon Haven. And when we finish the Rainwild Chronicles in January, we hope to do another live to kind of check in on our Realm of the Elderlings journey. Um, but I'm excited. I did really like the first one as you'll hear when I do my wrap up. So far, so good. So I'm excited to continue on with Dragon Haven. Next up, I have kind of a three in one. <laughs> That is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have, I'm holding two books here and it's really kind of three. Um, so my patrons and I voted on our next buddy read. And so they've chosen for this month and next month to read Frankenstein. And then next month, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. And I've read Frankenstein a couple times before. So uh, I'm rereading it now, but I decided because I don't have anything else to do this month. <laughs> <laughs> to read the, so if you don't know, there's a few different versions of Frankenstein. So there's the one that most people read nowadays, which is the the edited version that Mary Shelley herself updated a few years after the publication of Frankenstein in response to, even back then, <laughs> readers had problems with books and then they went back and changed them. So in response to some people's problems, she changed the story and then republished it and that's the version most people read. So I'm going to be reading the the updated version that everyone knows and is the one that most people reference and most things are based on uh, again. But also I've decided I found this copy, this edition, that is not just the original Frankenstein as it was originally published by Mary Shelley. It is also the original, original Frankenstein before it was published, before Percy Shelley, her husband made changes to it. So in this edition, the, you can kind of see where the pages get darker. The first one, well, I'll figure it out when I read it, but one of these versions is basically the way Mary Shelley originally wrote it. And the other one is the updated version that was the first way that it was originally published. But instead of just having it printed, um, straight up, it's it's printed where you can see which parts Percy Shelley added were suggested to be changed. So it is that original version, but where you can see what he did to change it. So I'm gonna try to do all three and compare and contrast and just live my best Frankenstein loving life this month. Uh, next up I have The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. Um, this copy, you can only get it as a, a bind up with uh, that and other stories. I aim only to read The Birds. I, maybe I'll read the others too, but that's what's on my TBR officially is just the birds because I've never read it and I would like to see the movie around this time of year. And I've been reading quite a bit of Du Maurier the last couple of years. So I thought I'd do the birds. 
this month because it's also quite short. <laughs> Next up is the other Stephen King book that I have on my TBR, which is not my fault. My patrons have voted on this to be the book that I read and vlog for them, and that is Salem's Lot by Stephen King, which is super long. <laughs> I have had a habit, a kind of a bad habit, in the last few months of kind of when I vlog books for my patrons, kind of doing it all in one day, where I just like marathon read the book and do a like one day vlog of reading it. I don't think I can really do that with Salem's Lot, <laughs> but we shall see. It'll, it'll be an experience. Unabashed chiller. Spine tingling fiction at its best. I mean, tis the season. Uh, next is a nice, nice short book. And it's my first T. Kingfisher book. And that is What Moves the Dead. Mainly because I've been seeing T. Kingfisher around a lot and all of the books by T. Kingfisher intrigue me. This cover the most intrigues me and this cover the most speaks to me of like fall October spookiness of darkness. And it's, I didn't even know how short it was when I picked it. So I'm very glad that I picked a short one. I don't, I think all Kingfisher's books are, I don't think any of them are toned, but anyway, I'm, this is a very pretty little book. The end pages, the naked cover. I'm quite stoked about this. I really hope I like it because I would like to keep this pretty little book. Next up is a continuation on from last year. Last year I started the Peculiar Children series. I didn't love it, but I have a bunch of them. So I kind of want to keep going. I didn't hate it. It was, it's the right time of year for it. They're cool. Um, so I'm going to read the second Peculiar Children book, um, Hollow City, the second novel of Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. We'll see how I do. If I like this even less than the first one, then I might give up. But the first one was like, okay, it wasn't like my favorite thing ever. The concept of using the photographs the way that he does is intriguing. It's certainly aesthetically appealing to me, <laughs> the look of these books and the way they integrate the photographs. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a go. Next up is a book that I kind of saw around a little bit, but then my friend re recommended it to me and said it is actually quite good. Um, and that is These Fleeting Shadows, um, which is a YA, I guess, horror thriller kind of book. The cover basically looks to me like the Haunting of Bly Manor, which I love. I love The Haunting of Bly Manor much better than The Haunting of Hill House. You can fight me on that. But yeah, so I, I don't really know too much about it other than that there seems to be a gothic house and that there will be chills and thrills. And that's really all I need in order to decide to read something. <laughs> Next up is a bit of a surprise because unless you follow me on Goodreads, um, and I haven't posted my wrap up yet, but I read last month just because the mood struck um, the Inheritance Games. Then I went ahead and bought the second and third books. And it feels like the right time of year for these books. They're just like, they're just really hitting the spot for me. Or at least the first one did. So I went ahead and grabbed the second one and put it on my TBR, The Hawthorne Legacy, the second in the Inheritance Games. And I mean, the vibes of the first one were immaculate. So that's really all I'm looking for from this. Just to live my best knives out life. <laughs> Continuing the trend of Mary Shelley and Frankenstein, um, I'm excited that we have another book from the trio, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, they um, moved on from the Lady Janies and moved on now to the Lady Marys. They did My Contrary Mary, I haven't read it yet, but I have it. But the second Mary they're tackling is Mary Shelley herself in My Imaginary Mary, which is a speculative, humorous retelling of the life of Mary Shelley. I, their style of humor has so far quite worked for me, so I'm looking forward to this. Next up is a book that I feel like this is the right time of year for also, and it's a very pretty book, so I hope I like it. <laughs> That is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Uh, she's been quite missed for me lately, but hopefully I like this. I have also the Alcrate edition of it. It's still wrapped in its plastic, which is a very cool edition of it. So I, I hope I like it. But if I don't, bye-bye. I managed to forget a book in my stack. So I just went and grabbed it. Um, so whatever I said my book count total was, it's one more than that. And that is Confessor by Terry Goodkind because we were doing this Word of Truth read along. And this is next. I've never read this. We are now into books that I've never read before. Last month's was the first one that I've never read before. This is now the next one that I've never read before. So that in and of itself is exciting to me. But uh, speaking of read-alongs, we are also continuing the first law read-along with The Trouble with Peace. And this book is so good. This is gonna be my third time reading it and I'm so excited. We will be talking about it on the Chapter 3 podcast um, and I am stoked. Next up I have The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling, which is another book that just I saw floating around. The cover had always intrigued me and this seems like the right time of year for it. I know next to nothing about it, except that it says, don't read this one alone at night. You know, what What more do you need? So yeah, I, I literally know almost nothing about this except that the cover is cool and it's a dark book. <laughs> so I hope I like it. Uh, next I have a whole bunch of book of the month club books um, because I do always read my previous month's book in the next month, but also I have some that from previous months and years that I just want to get through slash this is the time of year for them. So last year I read Practical Magic and I hated it, but I had already gotten, pro I think I got it at the same time. 
because I got Practical Magic because it had just come out, the prequel book that takes place in like, I think the witch hunting era, like the 1600s. But it's a, it is a prequel to Practical Magic, Magic Lessons. Um, but I believe like, I mean, it's such a gap of years that I don't think like you really need to be super familiar with Practical Magic because I mean, I did read it, but I don't remember too much about it except I hated it. But I have it, so I'd like to read it. This is the time of year for this. So if I don't like it now, I'll never like it. And I would, if I like it, great. And if not, then I can get rid of it. Then <laughs> a book that I've put on my October TBR for like several years in a row now, and I just never get to it. And this year, we're doing it. This is the year. It's happening. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have never read a book by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have two. I have this one and also from Book of the Month I have Gods of Jade and Shadow. I keep putting that on summer TBRs and not doing it. Maybe next summer will be the year, depending on how this goes. <laughs> but I'm excited at the very least to finally freaking read this book. I feel like it's haunting me. Uh, next up is the not just a Book of the Month club book. I mean, it is one, <laughs> but um, the Blades and Bodice Rivers book club thing, because yes, that's right, we're back. It's the Halloween show. We are dressing up for it and we are reading a spooky book for it and we will be gathering over on Bethany's channel to talk about The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. And I don't know too much about this, except that I believe it's kind of gothic-y, but also with like a Hispanic flair. But that's literally all I know about it. And then that, that, that it's what Bethany picked. So, so I got it <laughs> and I'm going to read it. And then uh, the last book of the month, my book is it, uh, it was just my pick from last month, although it does seem like appropriate for the season. And that is Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. Now, why did I think it was appropriate for the season? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I remember thinking that it would be. <laughs> Delightful and atmospheric, magical realism. Blah, blah, blah. Like it doesn't seem like super dark or anything, but it, it, it seems, I don't know, magical realism seems like a fall type of thing, doesn't it? Maybe not. I don't know. I have to read it because those are my rules. So I'm reading it. Next up is a book that um, I has intrigued me for a while, but my friend actually sent it to me because she was like, no, for real, like you should read this. And I was like, I'll add it to my October TBR. Uh, that is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. The cover is definitely giving Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is a book that I love. And also my friend who sent me this book also loves that book. <laughs> Again, this has intrigued me for a while and it seems to have gotten mainly positive reviews and it seems like the kind of thing that I would like. It's Victorian England. It's historical fantasy. Uh, it's a dark labyrinthine world. Um, it just, it sounds like my cup of tea. It is extremely long though, which is unfortunate given my TBR, but I am looking forward to it nonetheless. Next up is a book that I am reading with Alex because we agreed to this a while ago. Jimmy has somehow gotten in his way out of this. I guess he's just gonna miss out on the absolute joy that Alex and I will have in reading Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Oh boy. <laughs> this book is also very, very long, but but it does have lots of pictures in it. So, you know, it's a, it's a picture book. That's why it's so long. It's not even, it's not even that much text, right? Oh, this book is massive. I do, re I genuinely hope I like this. I just think there's a very low chance that I do. We'll find out and Alex and I will chat about it and we will all find out together how me and Alex felt about this Edge lord of a book. Two more to go. Uh, next up is a book that it's actually inspired entirely by Mara. Uh, she and I were on a World Hoppers video together where she mentioned this book. And I was like, that sounds amazing. Uh, and it is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I'd never heard of this. But if you don't know this about me, I love putting furniture together, like genuinely. I very much enjoy that activity. And this is, you know, a sort of Ikea inspired, somewhat, I guess, quirky and humorous horror book where it is multimedia. That's why the book is kind of shaped like this. And there's like, furniture assembly instructions, I'm told, that like get increasingly more bizarre and more sinister. And it just sounds like absolutely my kind of thing. I don't know how good it'll be, but at the very least it'll be a unique experience. So I'm excited about this. And last but not least, I have the Shelf Space book club because I've, I will be co-hosting Shelf Space in October with Evie and Joanna, and we will be reading uh, The Child Thief by Braum. I've had this on my shelf for a very long time. I actually have a couple copies of it because people keep giving it to me. <laughs> I have three there for a second <laughs> because it's it's Peter Pan, but like dark. So it's, you know, it sounds basically like my perfect thing, right? Because I love dark stuff and I love Peter Pan and Peter Pan is already pretty kind of a uh, kind of dark and sinister figure, but I'm basically, this is hot topic Peter Pan. <laughs> but I've heard always excellent things about this and just Brahm in general. I've never read anything by Brahm before. I've always wanted to. His The books always look incredible. And I think it's appropriate that The Child Thief should be my first. So I am very much looking forward to this and to discussing it on Shelf Space. And those are all the books that I will be attempting to get through in October. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about the books that I will be reading. If you've read them, if you want to read them, if you've never read them, if you have heard they're awful, if 
you would like to pr make me prioritize some of them, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times, well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.